Well, hey there, and thanks for stopping in a Night Shift video. My name is James, and tonight I am joined by this guy over here. Josh. Oh, Josh. First thing I wanted to bring up is our featured movie tonight is the movie that we watched last week. Okay. Which was The Platform. Yes. Now, the thing that I didn't do is go back and reference what we had we recorded uh, our first Patreon episode, Patreon exclusive episode. It is a uh, let's watch of us with uh, the platform, uh, which I thought worked out really well because it's something that is going to be accessible to most people, at least until Netflix pulls it, which probably won't be for a while, yeah. especially if you like horror exclusives. They keep on there for yeah. maybe even longer than they should. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I thought it would be cool to do kind of like a. Mystery Science Theater 3000 live commentary kind of jam with that. So that's what we did. So if you uh, are a pre Patreon supporter, you'll have access to that next week. Also, um, well, I guess by the time you're listening to this, it will be up. So not next week. You'll have access to it now. Go listen to the Patreon episode. Uh, and if you want to know what that's like, maybe become a Patreon supporter. We have multiple tiers uh, starting at five or technically starting at three, but like the real the real shit happens at five. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, you can check all that stuff out on patreon.com uh, slash night shift video. But what I should have done is reference our recording and get our actual nugget scores. Yeah. And I didn't. We did not. Because what I want to be able to do is when we have a featured film like this, at least, you know, give a very condensed version of what like our full on review episode would have been. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't fully have that. I think I was rating it. I gave it a thumbs up, but I rated it somewhere in like the 45 ish percent. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, maybe 55. It was south of 60. And I think you rated it a lot higher than that. If I'm remembering right. Did I give it a rating? Maybe not. I, I don't, don't know. Think I did because I was thinking of. Coming up with one. Yeah. Because I don't think I did. Did you come up with one? Yeah. What is it? It was 50. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still a thumbs up, right? Oh, yeah. I think, I think it was a unanimous thumbs up. It's just percentage wise, it was hard to give it a lot. Um, so the platform uh, is a Spanish science fiction horror movie. Uh, it's exclusive on Netflix right now. Probably going to be for a while. You can't say much about the plot without just spoiling it. So it's one of those things that. It has elements of, say, a saw or the cube. Uh, it's like definitely a, sing a singular setting type of thing. Singular setting. Definitely setting. a puzzle horror yeah. kind of thing. Um, but that's about all that I really want to say about yeah. it. So um, thumbs up from us. You should definitely check it out. It is at a 83% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty damn good. It's so, really high. I mean, we didn't. Rate it quite that high, but that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Obviously, a lot of people I love mean, it. If we, if we gave a longer <laughs> review, there are lots of things that oh, yeah. make it lower, but doesn't make it a bad movie. It's just not absolutely rated highly, which yeah. I know sounds disingenuous, but it's, I, it's the truth. It, it's our scale. Our, we can do whatever we want that's true. with our scale. And, you know, and my that's, nuggies. That's right. They're my nuggets. You can't have them. <laughs> uh, let me get my notes pulled up here. I can't believe I started without having them pulled up. I feel like an idiot. It's okay. <laughs> here we go. Um, so our warm up story for the night, we're going to be talking about the black Knight satellite conspiracy, the Martin Lawrence, correct? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> This is this is Black Knight uh, K N I G H T by the way if you're trying to look it up. Um, so the idea here is that in I guess we'll start kind of modern and maybe work our way back. No, I'll start modern and then we'll go back to the beginning. So kind of the biggest piece of evidence for this is uh, 1998 um, space shuttle Endeavor. Um, this was the first like big journey to international space station. Yes. And they came across this thing and they took some pictures of it. They ended up getting leaked to the public and people thought that it was this potentially alien probe satellite thing that actually has a shockingly long history. It does before this 
And we're just this is this was the evidence of it. It's like people who were already into the Black Knight satellite conspiracy were like, oh, shit, they got a picture. There it is. And then uh, it basically got (laughs) shot down uh, by NASA saying that it was a space blanket that got lost on a on a spacewalk. Yep. Like it just. Oh no. Like it's like when you well, roll fuck. down your window and like some trash <laughs> flies out of your side <laughs> compartment. You're like, oh, there goes the burger wrapper. Oops. <laughs> Which, I can't get it now. <laughs> you know, like obviously that is a very relatable situation. But like, is that what we're doing in space? <laughs> Someone's like, oh, there goes a wrench. Y'all don't got your uh, shit on lockdown. That doesn't sound safe for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so let's let's kind of back it up here so kind of the first well there's a lot of things that people have tried to tie into this i tried to kind of streamline it and not get into some of the stuff that it's like at best that's extremely loosely tied and you're drawing a lot of stupid conclusions here so i try to get to the the most meaningful things of actual uh unidentified satellites and so obviously we're using the term satellite. That doesn't necessarily mean the physical device of satellite as what you might be thinking with the radar dish and everything. Like, I mean, satellite is a, is a general term for something that orbits yep. an object that orbits a thing. Any object orbiting a thing is a satellite. And so this thing could be many things. It doesn't have to be Sputnik. Like it could be a lot of different things. It's just something that orbits the earth. Apparently, allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> so in uh, 1954, in the New York Times, they posted this article with an uh, interview with Dr. Lincoln La Paz, and he was saying that he saw two satellites orbiting the Earth. Now, what's interesting about that is that as far as what we know to be true or what we know the government claims to be true mm-hmm. <laughs> about space travel, uh, no country had claimed at that point that they could launch anything into space. Right. In 1954, that wasn't, we didn't really get into that until the, like towards the end of the fifties. Yeah. And so the fact that maybe there was something up there before we started shooting shit up there and leaving space blankets everywhere, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it just, uh, it, it begs some questions. Um, So a little further down the road, towards the end of the 50s, obviously we're getting right into the space race. Uh, U.S. and USSR both have satellites. Um, Then a U.S. Navy radar picked up the presence of a dark object that didn't seem to belong to either country. Um, Time magazine reported that it was a piece of space junk. Okay, I mean, I guess it's more forgivable in the 60s that maybe we're leaving shit up there, but I also... Mean, we thought smoking was great in every <laughs> circumstance. Hospitals, airplanes, babies. Like, it was just willy-nilly. But, but also, <laughs> we're not really good at sending stuff up. How good are we at leaving shit? Like, <laughs> we haven't really mastered the art of even getting it up there and to catch orbit. Like, are we good enough to pollute yet? I don't know. Like... I think that comes pretty naturally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately. Uh, Very unfortunately. Plastic Island. Good God. Uh, so the interesting thing about that is that uh, there were some documents that were declassified by the government. And we now know that the space junk story was a cover up. And once you see one cover up and you know for a fact it's a cover up, that's what opens the door that Anything could be true yep. or anything could be a lie. Like yep. once you know the government has covered something up and hidden something from you and now we have proof that it happened. Now, who knows what the fuck? So the documents basically said that it was an American spy satellite that was doing reconnaissance on the USSR, but. We didn't want to admit that when the U.S. Navy was like, oh, shit, what's that thing up there? We don't know. <laughs> Crazy, right? It's like, it's like when you forgot to clean your room. And your mom's like, what happened? I don't know. Someone must have come in here and made it dirty. I cleaned it. It was clean an hour ago when you asked me to. <laughs> so 
Ugh, it's not good. But like I said, that opens the door for basically any conspiracy theory to be true. Uh, so 1961, uh, we have Jacques Vallée, a French scientist, and he found, or at least claimed to have found, an object that was in retrograde around the Earth, which means that it is orbiting in the opposite direction of what it's supposed to be uh, in terms of gravity, naturally. Um, the interesting thing about that is we have that technology now. It's not that big of a deal. We've heard about things being in retrograde, especially if you're into the old uh, astrology thing. Uh. You hear about stuff being in retrograde all the time. But at the time, the ability in, the, in 1961, we, as far as we know, again, this is the thing where like, the government could have been hiding a lot of information about space travel this whole time, and we just don't really know what they knew, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as far as we know, at that time, we had no idea. We, we barely understood how to get it into orbit, let alone figure out how to way to get it into a reverse orbit. So he got video footage of it. He shows it to his immediate superior. The videotape is confiscated and destroyed. Never to be heard from again. Not suspicious at all. Not suspicious at all. Common. I destroy videotapes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I go to my employees and say, nope, not going to show that to anybody today. Uh, and then we have this one. The Mercury 7 astronaut Gordon Cooper allegedly claimed to have seen the Black Knight while he was in the Mercury 7 orbiting the Earth. And up to 100 other people who were tracking his voyage on Earth claimed that they saw it on the radar because they're tracking him. He says he sees it. They're like, oh, shit, we oh, yeah. see it, too. It's there. We see a thing. And according to Cooper, all of these things are false. So it's like, at what point is this all bullshit, or at what point is the military, government, black op, whatever, how, wherever you want to go, however deep or high you want to go on the chain or in the rabbit hole, intervening and saying, yeah, you can't talk about that. Here's a hundred grand, just shut up. Tell them, tell them that the UFO freaks made this all up. The guy like, from, oh, but I said it. No, 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 no. You didn't say it. They said you said it. That guy from Ancient Aliens, the guy with the big hair. <laughs> Just act like they're all crazy like that. Yep, yep. So, and so that's what brings us to the 1998, uh, the Space Shuttle Endeavor, where we got a picture, and then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's just a towel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a towel. And so, I don't know, like... It's weird. So the, the the kind of biggest theory is that this is some sort of uh, alien probe or monitoring satellite that it's from an extraterrestrial source getting information about Earth, possibly even communicating to us. And so you, if you believe in the idea that like, I don't know, the biggest thing that I could relate to was like Mass Effect of like there is is this big civilization out there and many civilizations out there? And they're like waiting for us to be ready before they're like, okay, like you can be a part of the club. Now mm -hmm. you stopped bombing each other. Like you've kind of figured shit out. So they're like <laughs> architects from destiny, the forerunners from halo. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All they're, of those things. They're just, they're just making sure. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the thing. Where where what I got out it's of it's just a little guilty spark theory. There. Little guilty spark before he goes crazy and tries yeah. to kill everyone <laughs> with that the, the flood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back to you with our main story of the night. Badoop boop, and we're back. <laughs> and we're back. It's been a while since we've uh, we've we've done it quite that way. So uh, I thought it'd be fun. Uh, our main story of the night. This. I'm really excited because it's a maybe creepy true crime, maybe potentially paranormal ghosty. I don't really know. There's a lot of different ways you can go with this. Maybe totally a hoax. Possibly. It, you just don't know with things like this. But it is a true story. 
and I found it on Reddit and I kind of transitioned to when I find something on Reddit that's about like a specific person to not do those stories because also um, copyright's weird. Reddit has this thing where it basically says anything that you post on Reddit is now owned by us. And so like tons of people do like reading creepypastas on YouTube and then they get sued for it or cease and desist. There's, there's all this stuff. I was like, we're just going to try to stay away from all that. But this is just a story from a person about a thing that happened to them. And I got a hold of them and got permission to use it. Oh, it felt so good. The internet's amazing. It felt so good. It felt so good. So many times it's like, you don't even know who the actual author was. And so it's like shooting in the dark to try to get permission. And like, no, this is a story that happened to somebody. They were freaked out. They posted it on Reddit. It kind of caught fire and got really wildly popular. I think it was originally posted in like 2013. Yep. And here we are. There's been a lot of people who have looked at it today. And now we are have looked at it up to today, and now today we are going to look at it. Uh, so this is the main story. It comes from a Reddit user Red Once Blue eighty, all smushed up together there, so you can find that if you'd like. And the name of the post is "Experience Using Sleep as Android App." Okay, we're gonna get into the original post here. I use an app called Sleep as Android to improve my sleep. One of the features is that it records your nighttime noises, snoring, sleep talk, cover ruffles, coughing, etc. I've been using the app since October 1st of 2013. I've never caught anything other than sounds created by me changing positions or coughing or something like that. Although I have been told several times that I talk in my sleep by other people. Pretty common. My wife talks in her sleep. She still doesn't believe me when I tell her. And then I'll like record it and play it back for her. She's like, that's not me. I'm like, I it's you. you, What? What is it? I do it on video. And she's like, oh, no, that's like the TV in the background. I'm like, are you insane? (laughs) Uh, Anyway, (laughs) so on 1230, so December 30th at 204 a.m., I caught something very weird to set up. This night, I was sleeping in my bed. My three-year-old was with me that night as he is scared of the dark. It was just the two of us in the whole house. The next night, I decided to go through and delete my recordings, and I saw this particular record. In it, you can hear some clicks that start to get louder over the course of the recording. Eventually, you hear me say, what are you doing? And then immediately after, there is a slightly deeper voice that says, nothing. The clicks become very loud, at that point, and then at the very end of the recording, you hear the same voice say, that's them. And then she says in parentheses, I think. I'm pretty creeped out by this. I don't remember being awake that night. The only plausible explanation is that I answered my own sleep talking, but the voice doesn't really sound like me or like something I could emulate. And it definitely does not sound like a voice that her preschooler, a three-year-old, could emulate. Uh, she said, I have no idea what the clicks could be. I keep a fan going at night for white noise, but the clicks sound like they're coming right from near my phone, which is placed beside me on the bedside table. I want to say that I have picked up the clicks a few other times on recordings, but deleted them thinking it was nothing. This is the first time I've heard anything. This is the first time I've heard anything though. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to the original recording. Um, I do have it on here and I got permission that we can use it. So you guys are going to hear it too. Uh, We're going to hear some white noise and then you hear like some ruffling or clicking. And then I definitely will say I hear uh, what are you doing? And then I hear something they say. And a lot of people on the Internet say they hear a voice respond, nothing. Mm -hmm. And then more kind of ruffling and clicky sounds. And then they hear at the end. That's them. So that's what you're supposed to hear. We're gonna we're gonna headphone up and uh it doesn't left or right doesn't matter, you'll be fine. Okay, I'm I'm gonna play that back one more time, and I'm gonna kind of do some some live pa- pausing and uh, deciphering.
Obviously, there we have, what are you doing? And it does sound like a woman waking up in the middle of the night where, like, maybe the kid was, like, kicking or, like, rolling over, like, starting to get out of bed or something. Like, I have a seven-year-old. I've had experiences like that where he ends up sleeping in our bed and it's like, what are you doing? Like, lay back down, go back to bed, things like that. That comes through clear. And then right here is where we get the response. And I know what I think it sounds like, but... Apparently, a lot of people say it sounds like there someone says nothing, and it does not sound like a three-year-old responding. That's for sure. Okay. Oh God, I know what I think it sounds like, but I don't want to say it yet. Do you have? Do you have? Do you hear anything there? I think because I heard what she uh-huh. said, I think I can't get past that like mental block of what right it might else be. I get that. that I get getting. that. Okay. Fan. And then that's them. Mm-hmm. That seems that's very yeah. clear to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to play this out. I, there, I also have uh, from another Reddit user, um, Findebran, uh, who did a lot of work on this, and he has a cleaned up version that I'm gonna play for us as well. So this has a lot of the white noise and some of the clicking removed. It's also cut a little bit shorter, so we kind of get right to the voices. What are we doing? Okay. I mean. Good God. Okay, so obviously like a lot of people have talked about like, oh, is this something paranormal, like a ghost kind of thing? And then like, Almost the scarier thing, though, is like, was there someone in your house? Like the the most pro well, the most probable thing is the we is the the most terrifying. Most terrifying. Uh, so I will say there there has been updates um, from the original user, uh, Red Ones Blue Eighty, and she does no long she no longer lives in this same place. Great decision. Exactly. <laughs> Get- uh, but let me uh, let me tell you what I actually hear. And to me, it kind of maybe even furthers the idea that maybe someone or maybe potentially some ones are in the house and maybe they were looking maybe 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 red ones blue 80 was specifically being targeted. OK. Hence the that's them because that seems like a weird thing, you mm-hmm. know. So here, here's here's my interpretation. What are we doing? What are you doing? Obviously, this is Red One's Blue Eighty. Here's something in her room. Wakes up and says, "What are you doing?" Okay. That what I get is I don't think that's them, or I don't think it's them. That's what I get. Huh. Which would potentially open the door for there being two intruders of someone. If, if they're like in the house, possibly going door to door, maybe they're targeting a certain person or persons and they take a peek and they say, first, they're probably startled by her going, what are you doing? <laughs> and they're like, Oh, I don't think that's them. And then you get the response. That's them. That's them. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to play it back now and you listen for, okay. I don't think it's them. Okay. What are we doing? Okay. Yeah. Oh God. And so, and so my, my thought process is, is one of two things. Uh, what I said, maybe it's two people or it's a mentally ill person who's yeah. having a conversation with themselves. And like, they are looking at it's like, I don't think it's them. And then they're like, oh, that's them. Like potential schizophrenia, multiple personality disorder, all different kinds of things that you could talk about that could potentially cause someone to have that going on in this situation. Uh, but yeah, we'll do, we'll listen one more time. Then we can take the headphones off. Cause my, my ears are getting hot. <laughs> what are we doing? Okay. Um... Oh, okay. So, uh, 
a uh, Reddit user, Fendebrand, who did the the cleanup on the audio recording, he just did some incredible work. And you can find his uh, his own Reddit post that's linked within uh, Red Ones Blue 80s. And you can kind of see everything that he did. I'm not going to go into all of the technical details, but uh, essentially he listened and said that, you know, to him, it definitely sounds like a different voice other than hers. I will say the first time I heard it, I'm like, it's just the same voice. Right? So the first time I heard it was just on my phone. Yeah. Just in a space. <laughs> and that's, I really didn't get any, a lot of the stuff they said I didn't really hear. Uh-huh. Um, hearing it, um, the uncleaned up version. Yes. It was kind of, kind of the same thing. I went, it doesn't, I can't really hear it that well. But then... Clean up version went, oh, yeah. It's, it's it's different enough, especially if she was asleep. Like, I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't feel like waking him up out of a sleep year would subconsciously just create these voices. Right. Like the different pitches and everything. Yeah. So this guy actually like went into quite a bit of research of like how your vocal cords work while you're sleeping, like what type of position that they're in. And he also goes into a lot of scientific detail about, uh, uh, what is it? A spectrogram and Mm -hmm. spectrogram analysis. And like looking at the audio waves form audio waveforms through a spectrogram and actually seeing like what frequencies are being hit and Mm -hmm. things like that. And according to him and his research, which I think he is backed up absolutely beautifully, is that with the register at which your typical female vocal cords operate Mm -hmm. and the frequencies that they're hitting works for uh, what are you doing, but does not work for the response, which Mm -hmm. some people say is nothing, I think is something different, um, or the that's them. And those two uh, responses, when you look at them on a spectrogram, like specifically are, are significantly lower in frequency, Hmm. which obviously if, you know, I I guess primer on audio engineering, like lower frequency doesn't necessarily mean quieter. Some people might think that that's what that means. It it literally means lower in register, but because it's just frequencies, like it can be a big jump in frequency, but not a huge jump in tonality to your ear. Yeah. And, but he even goes into the details of like what these frequencies technically would represent on like a musical staff. And um, I think like the first one was like a C and then like the response is like an F sharp and like the way that your vocal cords work, I believe he was saying are like, they're super relaxed whenever you're sleeping. So if you were to first wake up, which makes sense, mm-hmm. your whole body's relaxed. Yeah. And whenever you first wake up, like that's why like you might have that, like your voice sounds weird when you first wake up. Oh yeah. I can sing much lower <laughs> when I wake up in the morning. So like everyone's voice just sounds very different when they first wake up because your vocal cords are so relaxed. And uh, so someone who's sleeping relaxed vocal cords make the first sound most likely would not physically be able to make the second sound yep. according to his research, which I think is really good. I think it's backed by science pretty well. There's been a lot of people I saw uh, commenting still kind of throwing his, his work under the bus. But uh, I mean, you know, Finda brand, Finda, Finda Baron, sorry, Finda Baron, I'm on I'm on uh, I'm on page with you, bro. So uh, what do you what do you think in general could could have been what's happening here? I mean, I think the most plausible is another human somehow being there. Yeah, I mean, we've heard other actually like of, you know, experiences where people have lived in other people's houses for a long, really (sighs) uncomfortable amount of time. Brother, I and have said it before with the amount of times that I go down into my basement and I have an exterior door to my basement. Mm-hmm. Like someone could totally live in my basement <laughs> and I would have no idea. So I think that's the most plausible. Yeah. If you wanted to get, I get more out there. I think you could go to it being a house where. There are par- there's paranormal activity. Sure. Um, I 
believe in paranormal activity. Probably not for the same reason some people do. But right. I think that it is 100% a thing. Yeah. And. I think know. if it was something like that, I feel like there probably would have been more of a ramp up. Yeah. And there'd probably be more to the story. Um, and, and she originally posted on uh, the subreddit Our Ghosts. Like, that was her first place mm. that she kind of reached out for help. Um, but yeah, I think that there would have been, especially if we're talking like some kind of like malevolent entity or something demonic. I just imagine there would there would be something more sinister about yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem like anything really. It seems like a one off. One off. Like it happened and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is Ugh. weirder and makes me more think humans. I don't know. I don't know how humans, but humans somehow just because like maybe it was some weird person who, I, I don't know, maybe some kind of stalker or like something like that. And they like kind of pushed it to this limit once and then maybe even freaked themselves out so much that they never did it again or something like that. Uh, it maybe burglary, things like that. I, I very rarely, does a house get burgled more than once? Right. Like you get robbed from once. They don't, they don't come back the next week to see if you got anything else they can yeah. take, you know, You're usually out of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so obviously it didn't happen again, which is like what makes me think people. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you think of like, I don't know, like kids van, like meaningless vandalism wouldn't be this situation, but like the same kind of human psyche type thing of like, you're probably not going to go toilet paper the same house over and over again unless it's like your principal, someone, you know, yeah. exactly like you have a personal relationship. If it's a random act of crime, you're probably not going to return to that same place over and over and over again. Yep. You're, you're going to do it once. You're not going to do it again or you're going to go somewhere else so you don't get caught. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> red one. Red one. It's blue 80. Thank you so much for allowing us. Yeah. To, to talk about the story and, glad and to, you moved. To, I am very happy that you moved. I hope that, you know, <laughs> you and your child at the time, if you have more now, whatever the situation may be, I hope that you're all safe. Um, and yeah, it sounds like it was a good thing to get out of that house. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it would have been good to stay there. Even if it was a one off, there's just something about it that doesn't seem right. Um, but yeah. Have you ever seen that video of, it, I think it's a Chicago apartment and it's like this guy and his girlfriend are like, it's on like all those YouTubes of like the 10 creepiest things caught on film and like, or 10 creepiest things caught on security cameras, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like this guy, and his girlfriend are like sitting on the couch watching TV and then they have like a loft. Okay. And then you see someone climb through the window of the loft um, but there it's like and it's like late at night so mm -hmm. like they they could be falling asleep on the couch watching the office or whatever by this point yeah. you know what i mean and like but you see the person like start to come down the stairs and then realize that they're sitting there and then leave and then i think when they leave if i'm remembering it correctly when they leave obviously they're leaving in a much bigger hurry than when they walked in. Yeah. So they made noise and like the guy jumps up and flip the flips the lights on and there's nobody there. You've never seen, seen that, that video. Yet. Oh, I'm going to find it. I'll, okay. I'll find it and I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, it's oh God. It's really good. And this story made me think of it. Oh, if, if you ever have time and you want to creep yourself out by not listening to the podcast and doing something else, I would say one of the best things that you can do to creep yourself out is to look up YouTube videos of, Scariest things caught on film, scariest things caught on security cameras, scariest things caught on CCTV. Any of those Google searches will get you gold. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, there's some weird stuff. There's some weird stuff out there. There's one I remember that I think may have ended up being proved as a hoax, but it's kind of what we were talking about, about like someone living in your house mm -hmm. And it's like the single guy who lives in this apartment and then like he leaves for the day and on his he he like like every day he would notice like a little bit of food being gone, mm -hmm. but like not enough to like make a difference. And then yeah. it's like, oh, did I get drunk and eat that? I don't remember. Like whatever. <laughs> and then like one day he's like, no, I think something weird's happening. And so he mm -hmm. like set up a camera in his kitchen and like as soon as he leaves the house, he has a I think it's a, like a drop 
drop ceiling uh-huh. and like you see the ceiling tile pop out mm-hmm. and this like kind of scraggly looking woman crawls out oh my god and she's like sitting on top of the fridge and like looking around like to see if any but if anybody's there oh my and then gosh. she like crawls climbs down makes herself a sandwich gets herself a drink and then crawls right back up into the drop ceiling <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> I'm really messing you up right now because like you're living this. at home alone yeah, I right, don't now. Like this right now. This is not good. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Charlie is. Charlie will get him. Charlie is loud. Yeah. Char- Charlie's Josh's, Josh's trusty little guard yeah, dog. He'll get him. And uh, he might not get him, but he'll he'll make he'll sure you know, know something's I'll get there. Him for <laughs> <laughs> he'll let you know something's there for sure. <laughs> I can't even pull into the driveway without him barking his yeah, head off. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, there you have it. That does it for us here at the Night Shift uh, for Night Shift Video. My name is James, and this guy is Josh. And we're just saying, thanks for stopping in. There's ghosts beating down my doors right now. What's happening? People living in the walls. Thank <laughs> you.